Debt is a scary word, but for billionaires, it's a powerful tool. In this video, we will explore the ways in which billionaires leverage debt to grow and maintain their wealth. We will delve into the different types of debt and how they can be used to generate income and build assets. We will also show you how billionaires like Warren Buffett and Elon Musk use debt to their advantage. So sit back, relax, and get ready to learn from the best in the business. If you're unsure about what debt really means, don't worry, you're not alone. At its simplest, debt is money that's been borrowed and needs to be paid back with interest. From personal loans to credit card debt, there are many types of debt out there. While debt can be a scary prospect for many people, it can also be a powerful tool for building wealth. One of the key advantages of using debt is that it allows individuals and businesses to make investments that they wouldn't be able to make with their own funds. For example, a business might take out a loan to purchase new equipment or expand its operations. The hope is that these investments will generate enough income to cover the cost of the loan and still provide a profit. Of course, there are also risks associated with taking on debt. If investments don't pan out as expected, borrowers can find themselves in a precarious financial situation. Additionally, high levels of debt can lead to financial distress as borrowers struggle to make payments and may eventually default on their loans. However, for those who use debt wisely, the rewards can be significant by taking on debt strategically, individuals and businesses can leverage their existing resources to generate even more income and build assets that will increase in value over time. But have you ever wondered what specific methods do the wealthiest among us use to put debt to their advantage? With a large credit line at their disposal, their capital and assets become collateral for loans that are used to invest and grow their businesses. It's like having your cake and eating it too. While their assets are busy earning returns, their borrowed money is also hard at work creating more returns, increasing their net worth in the process. Think of it as a high stakes game of chess where the wealthy use debt as a strategic tool to outmaneuver their opponents and gain an advantage in the world of finance. It's a tried and tested method that has helped many people build massive wealth over time. They use this technique primarily in five different ways. First, leverage in real estate. Have you ever wondered how billionaires continue to grow their wealth even after amassing fortunes? One strategy they use is taking out loans to purchase income generating assets such as commercial properties. By leveraging their existing wealth, they're able to acquire assets that produce passive income while the value of the assets appreciates. This not only increases their net worth, but also allows them to generate a steady stream of income without having to actively work for it. For example, a billionaire might take out a loan to purchase a commercial property that generates rental income. The rental income from the property can be used to pay off the loan while the value of the property itself continues to appreciate. This not only increases the billionaire's net worth, but also generates a steady stream of passive income. By leveraging debt, they can make use of 5% down payments and multiply their capital by 20 times or even a thousand times with monthly payments. With just a $10,000 down payment, you can own a property worth $200,000 and pay a monthly installment of $2,000. The best part? The returns on your investment are not just limited to the money you put in, you earn returns on the full amount of the loan. If the property you invested in decreases in value by 20% from $200,000 to $240,000, your $10,000 down payment will create a whopping 300% return with a return on investment of $40,000. Second, leveraged buyout. Imagine you've been eyeing a business for a while now and you're finally ready to make your move. You want to buy it, but unfortunately, you don't have enough capital to make the purchase outright. What do you do? This is where a leveraged buyout comes into play. An LBO is a bold and strategic move where the buyer or buyers take on a significant amount of debt as part of the purchase process. The buyer will use the assets from a purchase company as collateral to acquire it with the aim of paying off the debt later using future cash flow from the company. 
It's like a high-stakes game of chess where the buyer uses the company's own assets to acquire it, with the plan of paying off the debt later using the company's profits. If executed well, an LBO can result in the buyer gaining controlling interest in the target company, opening up a world of opportunities and possibilities. Sure, taking on a large amount of debt can be intimidating, but for savvy investors, it can be a smart way to grow their wealth and control the direction of the company they acquire. It's all about having a strategic plan in place to pay off the debt over time while simultaneously expanding the company's revenue and profits. Third, short selling. If you've ever wanted to make money in the stock market without actually owning any of the stocks, well, that is exactly what short selling is. It is like reversing the order of operations in the stock market. Instead of buying a stock and then selling it later for a higher price, you sell something you don't own yet. You borrow the stock from your broker and sell it to a buyer, but you owe your broker the shares. This means you're in debt for the shares using the credit available in your margin account. It's like being short on shares, but long on cash. Sounds crazy, right? But don't worry, it's not as complicated as it seems. When you want to cover the short position, you simply buy back the shares you borrowed from the open market. Your broker then returns the shares to the account they were borrowed from. It's all done electronically today and is computerized and automated. The key to making money in a short sale is to sell high and buy low. If you sell short for a higher price than you buy it back later for, you still have a profit using debt. However, keep in mind that while you're short a stock, you have to pay margin interest on the position size held. You'll also have to pay any dividends due on the stock during the time period you're short. Fourth, margin account. With this special brokerage account, your broker can lend you cash or shares as collateral to buy securities. And that's just the beginning. Margin trading can add buying power to your account, allowing you to take on larger trades and more frequent trades without waiting for clearance. By using margin, you can supercharge your trading results. Imagine doubling the size of your trades. Your wins will be twice as large and your losses twice as painful. That's the trade-off. But with the right strategy and risk management, margin can be a powerful tool to help you achieve your financial goals. Day traders especially can benefit from margin accounts. They can keep their buying power high without waiting for all the trades to clear, which means more opportunities to profit from market movements. Just remember to use margin wisely and never trade more than you can afford to lose. Fifth, using debt for living expenses. You might think that taking on debt to fund a luxurious lifestyle is a bad financial move, but for billionaires, it's just another tool in their arsenal. While it may seem counterintuitive to take on debt to fund extravagant purchases, billionaires often have access to low interest loans that they can use to finance their purchases while still generating income from their investments. But that's not all. Wealthy individuals with high net worth can also rely on lines of credit backed by their assets to cover their expenses. They're savvy enough to only pay off their loans using sources that have optimal tax structures, such as selling their personal residence, which isn't taxable in most states, disposing of losing investments, collecting dividends taxed at a lower rate than income, or selling stocks that have a lower tax rate than their high income tax bracket. It's like playing a game of financial chess, where every move is strategic and well-planned to minimize taxes and maximize returns. Tell us down in the comments if you have ever used any of these methods to leverage debt to your advantage. Let's take a fascinating look at the financial maneuvers of Elon Musk and how he uses debt to his advantage. When Musk wants to acquire a company like Twitter or simply needs some extra cash for living expenses, he doesn't have to liquidate his holdings in Tesla and pay hefty capital gains taxes. Instead, he can use his vast holdings of Tesla shares as collateral for credit lines which allow him to access billions of dollars in cash whenever he needs it. Musk's pledged shares of Tesla serve as an ongoing credit facility, giving him the flexibility to borrow money without selling his shares and triggering a taxable event. This savvy financial strategy not only helps him avoid unnecessary taxes, but also allows him to hold on to his valuable assets, which have the potential to appreciate in value over time. 
The world's most savvy investor Warren Buffett, the Oracle of Omaha himself, also used debt to build his vast fortune. In the 1950s, Buffett started a partnership with $174,000 of his own money and $110,000 from 11 limited partners. Over time, he borrowed money to invest in stocks. As his investments grew in value, he was able to repay his loans and reinvest the profits. That's it for today's video, and thanks for watching. We hope you found it informative and insightful. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more informative content on finance and investing. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. And if you have any questions regarding how you can use debt in your favor, don't hesitate to ask in the comments. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.